Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a very simple, cheap and reliable rotating super smelter in your Bedrock Edition worlds. This is the clear choice over the standard traditional super smelter as they are so simple to build and so cheap as well. Not only that, this is a scalable system to fit any needs that you may have. I'll be showing you how to build a smaller 27 furnace array which only uses 4 hoppers, but if you need something a little bit beefier, I'll be showing you how to double that and make a 54 furnace array which only uses 8 hoppers. As you can see, this is the clear choice if you are on a budget for materials or if you just like cheaper, more lag efficient builds. This system also has two other very nice, very rare features that most traditional systems and rotating systems do not have. First of all, it has even item distribution so every single one of your furnaces will get the exact same number of items all the time which helps with your fuel efficiency and helps you smelt things as fast as possible. Furthermore, it is 100% fuel efficient, so every single piece of fuel that you put into the system will be used completely and smelt the maximum number of items that it can, which is a huge, huge thing, again, if you're on a budget or if you just like maximum efficiency in your builds. So there you go. This thing is basically perfect. I highly recommend it, and hopefully you enjoy it in your Bedrock Edition worlds. So let's check out this system in detail, shall we? Here is the full system in front of you here, and as you can see, it is only two blocks wide, which is another really awesome pro of this system. So here is the fuel input, all you gotta do is toss in a whole bunch of scaffolding and then you toss in whatever you want to smell it doesn't matter what it is you flick the on switch and then everything basically gets to it so that's all there is to it you also get items basically instantly as well because as soon as this furnace makes it over to here it is already done smelting one item so as you can see you're getting tons and tons of items very very quickly from your system at first glance you might think that this is a very very slow system because the piston feed takes that moves the furnaces around isn't really quick however that is by design you do not want a fast piston feed tape in your super smelter because the furnaces cannot smelt as they are moving so here's a little demonstration right here we got furnaces with things to smelt and they're both going to get one piece of fuel that will smelt exactly one item and you'll notice that the left one actually activates a little bit later than the right one which further proves the point this one's going to finish smelting way before the right one one, simply because it is not being moved as often as you can see this one's already done this one is still going so the more that you move your furnaces the slower that they smelt which is something that you do have to take into account when building this type of system and now that the lit furnaces have gone all the way around you can witness the fuel efficiency in action so this furnace right here is running out of fuel and it gets done smelting that item right before it gets put back to the beginning so you'll have your furnaces turn off for like you know, half a second when they're completely done smelting their items, then they get more items and they get refueled, and that's pretty much all there is to it. All the items from this furnace will then be dumped into your output chest, the furnace will have smelted another item by then, so you basically get non-stop constant items in the output chest, so it's a very, very fast system. Flipping around to the backside so you can see the redstone, it is all very straightforward. This is the actual brain of the system, as you can see it's literally just two repeaters are clocking, and that just activates the piston feed tape. Everything else it just has timings and some very simple activations for the smart pistons. There's only one observer in the system which helps with reliability of course. Moving on from the smaller 27 furnace array, we have the larger, more beefy 54 furnace array. It is a very simple upgrade from the smaller version. It is only 4 blocks wide and it barely has any additional redstone and no additional circuitry, which is a very nice bonus if you feel like upgrading. So this thing is of course twice as fast as the 27 array because it has twice as many furnaces and it works just as well with all of the same fuel efficiencies and even item distributions. Thank you very much to Brandon for requesting today's Bedrock Edition tutorial. I've greatly enjoyed working on this. It's been a fun and kind of difficult little project and we've certainly needed a new super smelter on the channel. The last one I made was literally my first Bedrock Edition tutorial, so we kind of needed an upgrade from that hunk of junk. So thank you very much Brandon for requesting today's video. Brandon is a 
patron of ours over on Patreon, helping support the channel tremendously and requesting cool videos like this as well. So thank you very much, Brandon. Much appreciated. Real quick, before we hop into the tutorial, I want to talk to you about fuel efficiency and the best fuel that you can use in Minecraft. So the best fuel in the game, as we've discussed in previous videos and tutorials, is of course scaffolding. It only takes six bamboo and one string to make six scaffolding, and one scaffolding can smelt six entire items. It is extremely easy to get a buttload of bamboo and a buttload of string as well. So clearly this is the best fuel in the game. I made an entire video breaking down all the fuels so you can check that out if you are interested. This system right here will put one scaffolding and six items into the first furnace which is that one right there. This is perfectly timed so that by time the furnace gets pushed all the way around the system to that spot right there. It has smelted exactly six items, uses 100% of the fuel, and gives you maximum efficiency per fuel used. So make sure that you use this system with scaffolding. If you use like coal or coal blocks, then it's not quite going to be as efficient and it will not work as well. You'll be wasting your fuel and you won't be getting the maximum output that you could be. And also you'll be wasting your coal. Scaffolding is way easier to get and I highly recommend that you build a bamboo and a string farm to get absolutely loads of this stuff. So let's hop into the tutorial, shall we? There's going to be a full materials list for this build down in the description of the video for your convenience. All the materials you need are down there, of course. And the area that you need to build is 17 blocks wide by 2 blocks deep and 7 blocks tall. Six of those are going to be above the ground and you need to go into the ground by one block for some pistons. So if you want to build the much larger 54 furnace array, it is simply going to be 4 blocks deep instead of 2 blocks deep. So so for the standard tutorial, just ignore these iron blocks. Those are simply there for the 54 furnace array. You will also want to make sure that you have adequate room in the ceiling as well because we're going to have a chest right here. So if you got solid blocks above that chest, you won't be able to open it. So if you want to build the 54 furnace array, you first have to build the 27 furnace array. The 54 is simply an expansion to the base model. So you got to watch the whole tutorial either way. To start off with construction of your furnace array, go to the front left corner of your build area and count in by five blocks. So one, two, three, four, five. Place in 12 furnaces going all the way to the right side to here. Place in a piston right there to push all of those across. And now we need two more furnaces right there. Skip this corner block and place in another 12 going all the way to the left. Put in another two furnaces right there, and that should be 27 in total. You are now good to go to install your item input, so have a hopper right here with a double chest on top. That's where all the items you want to smelt will be going. Swing around the backside, have a hopper right there, and a double chest right here, and that's where all of your fuel will be going as well. You now want to count over by five furnaces, so one, two, three, four, five, and then place in a double chest right here, and that is going to be the output for all of the items from your system. And now it's time to install the main circuitry of your system, so place a solid block right here, and then skip three blocks, and install a redstone lamp right there with a lever on it. That doesn't need to be a redstone lamp, but it's always good to have an indicator light for your system. Swing around the back side, and you want a redstone torch, and then four slabs going across like so three repeaters on four ticks each in these areas with two redstone dust just like so. We're now going to go down below this torch and place in a piece of glass and then two solid blocks in both of those locations. Have yourself an upper slab in that spot right there and then we need a little bit of an X of solid blocks. So solid blocks and all of these areas just like so. That is the foundations of your redstone. We're now going to put redstone there, 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 and there. Have yourself a repeater on four ticks in this location. Redstone dust. Repeater on one tick right there. And then a redstone torch right there as well. If we remove that redstone dust, then that system should clock. And that's exactly what you want. Swing around to the front side and you want to go two blocks to the right of your redstone lamp. Place an observer facing downwards with a solid block above it and then three slabs going to the right, going into another solid block. You want three repeaters, two of them are going to be on four ticks like so, and the last one is going to be on two ticks. Go ahead and place a normal piston facing directly downwards right underneath that block. Now it's time for the lower left smart piston, so go down to this corner, place in a repeater and a lever powering that repeater 
repeater, break out this block and replace it with a normal piston facing upwards, and make sure this block right here is a solid block. Place a piece of redstone dust right there, and anytime your furnace gets pushed to this location, it's basically just going to get pushed upwards. And now to install the upper left smart piston, go to this corner right here and install two upper slabs, put a lever and flick it, and then have a repeater going into that furnace. You want another upper slab on this side with redstone dust right there, solid block right there, and another solid block right there. Put a redstone torch there, and finally a repeater on two ticks pointing into a normal piston just like so. Very simple smart piston to push these furnaces back into that location. You now want to flip around to the back side and install a redstone torch right there, lower slab, and then a normal repeater pointing into this hopper. That is going to make it so that only one fuel will be put into every furnace, achieving fuel efficiency. And the final thing that you need to do is place yourself a redstone torch right here in that location, and that is the entirety of your system completely done. Congratulations, you built yourself an extremely simple, straightforward, and very, very cheap rotating super smelter. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would suggest that you stick around for how to upgrade this to the 54 furnace array because it is, it is very simple and I think you'll find it worth your while to upgrade this to the beefier version. But if you're not going to stick around, thank you for watching. Leave like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. I'll see you in the next one. If you are sticking around, do all those things anyway. <laughs> okay, so upgrading this to the 54 furnace array is extremely simple. All you need to do is place in another 27 furnaces right in front of all of these original ones that you had. And now we need to update our item inputs and outputs. So simply put, put another hopper right there. Change this double chest to face it to the side like so. Put another hopper right there and another double chest on top of that. These two double chests are going to be for your fuel inputs. And this, of course, is still going to be for your smeltable item inputs like your ores or your raw chickens. Go ahead and go down to the bottom and bring this double chest forward. Put two hoppers pointing down into it like so and two hoppers into the back of it for 10 hoppers in total which is very convenient or if you feel like saving two hoppers just put two double chests. Now we need to slightly rewire the circuitry for the brain of this system so go ahead and move over your redstone lamp to the right by one block including the redstone torch out the backside. Go ahead and remove that original one and place in a upper slab right there, a repeater on one tick like so, and now we need to redo this redstone line. So just have yourself uh, two solid blocks in these locations like so, and you can keep that slab right where it was. And now we need to update all these smart pistons in our build, so head to the upper right one, place a piston facing it downwards like so, and one piece of redstone dust right there. For the lower right one, we need to have another piston facing forwards. Remove this redstone torch and place a saw block there. Redstone torch and then a piece of redstone dust on top of that piston. For the lower left smart piston, this one over here, we need to build an entirely new one. So piston facing upwards. Make sure that that is a solid block and then have a piece of redstone dust. One more repeater and then we can put a saw block there with a lever on it to power both of those. For the upper left one, this guy, we need another piston right here. Have yourself a two upper slabs, repeater on two ticks, and a redstone dust right there. Make sure to place in the redstone torch on the side of that piston, and then a upper slab, and another repeater going into this hopper for your fuel efficiency. And the final thing that you need to do for your upgraded system is place another solid block right there and one more piece of redstone dust to lock that hopper so it doesn't put items in there before the system is ready to roll. Now you can go ahead and dump in a bunch of fuel into your fuel input chest, put some smeltable items into your smeltable items chest, flick the lever, and the system is now 100% ready to go, completely done and dusted. I'm pretty happy with it. Hopefully you enjoy this system in your Bedrock Edition worlds, and let me know what you think about this build down in the comment section. If you have any issues with it, if you like it, if you find any ways to improve it, or if you want more systems like this in the future, then let me know. I'm always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can, but that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like as it greatly helps out the video and the channel. If you're new here, then consider subscribing so you don't miss more tutorials in the future, of which there will be many. And I'll see you guys down in the comments and in the next one. And then there was silence.